Hi, I'm the Angle Librarian and I've just finished reading Adam Neville's No One Gets Out Alive. Now this book follows Stephanie Booth as she struggles to start a new life in the town of Birmingham. Now with no fixed abode or place of work, Stephanie scrapes together what money she can through temping jobs at agencies and basically rents little rooms in shared accommodation. The story pretty much begins when Stephanie finds a new large room that she can rent for 40 quid a week, which sounds pretty decent, but also slightly dodgy, but then that's a given when your landlord's name is Knacker. But Stephanie doesn't care about that, it's cheap, it's decent size, and it's not like she's going to be there on her own, I mean, Knacker says there are other girls there. But during her first night there, Stephanie hears a woman crying in the room next door. Then she hears someone crying and talking from behind the fireplace. Then she hears someone crying from underneath the bathtub. Things just start to get weirder when she then senses people in her room. She hears footsteps on the staircases and she thinks she can hear someone being raped in the next room, even though there's no one there. And as the days go by, Stephanie starts to succumb to the depressing atmosphere which seems to reside in this house. There's just an air of depression and she starts to sort of lose the will to live. She becomes paranoid and soon enough, she starts crying along with all the other people that are supposed to be in this house. Now, no offence to you, Steph, but get over yourself, woman. I mean, so what? You can hear people crying. People cry all the time. I mean, I work with women who cry during staff meetings for crying out loud. You see what I did there? Crying out loud because, you know, they're always crying. No? All right, moving on. I mean, everybody cries from time to time. Even manly librarians such as myself have been known to shed a tear or two. I mean, I've only just recently learned about the angry cry, which is kind of like a tantrum for an adult, where you cry and you get so worked up and angry that you throw things around the room. And it sounds like a good way of venting all your frustrations and angers, but I'd probably make my cup of tea wrong and then I'd get really angry and throw it across the room. And then I'd end up just making a big mess out of the milk. And there's no point in crying over spilt milk, which I wouldn't, because remember, I'm a manly librarian. Really? A spilt milk joke? That's two bad jokes already. Why am I allowed to interact with people? When I cry, I become a snotting, blubbering wreck, and it's quite embarrassing, to be honest. I'd have to imagine that I hold myself together pretty well, but in reality, I keen like an injured dog, my high-pitched moans of despair alerting animals of all ilk around the world to just how depressed and upset I am. That said, those times of crying are pretty rare and usually occur when people die, which, you know, I can't exactly be judged for. It's an angry librarian fact that even manly men such as myself can cry in the face of death. And for the record, I'm talking about the death of people that I actually know and loved. Not some fictionalised bint on the movie screen who dies in an overly emotionally charged, oscar orientated movie scene. I mean, who cries at movies? Well, actually, a lot of people do, but honestly, not me. Now, I'll admit that when I was a child, I probably used to cry at movies, but, you know, I used to cry if I ran out of Smarties. In fact, that still gets me right here. Now, if you happen to be one of these people that cries when some fictionalised character buys the farm, well, I want you to know that not only am I judging you when you do it, but I also feel embarrassed on your behalf, especially if I'm watching a movie with you, doubly so if we happen to be in the cinema. This happened to me years ago when an ex started blubbering at some chick flick he'd want to go see at the cinemas. Now, I can't remember the name of said abomination, but when it was finished, his face was doing a pretty damn good impression of Niagara Falls. Good God, did that make me feel uncomfortable? But don't worry, I handed the situation with tact. I mean, he received a slight elbow to the ribs and a stern telling to man the fuck up for Christ's sake, which, for some reason, seemed to make him cry more. I mean, what was the big deal? It's just a film. I don't get it. And before you all start calling me a heartless monster, saying that I'm a soul completely devoid of all feelings and emotions, let me tell you this. Emotionally charged scenes do have an effect on me. I mean, I can find myself feeling and caring for a character on the screen. I can even find myself coming to like them and hoping that they don't end up in bad situations. And if a particularly powerful scene takes place, I can sometimes feel an emotion brewing within the depths of my soul. And from time to time, I find that my vision starts to blur slightly. But I simply blink my eyes a few times and it passes. Did I cry? No. Did the scene still have an effect on me? Of course it did. Let me give you some examples. Doctor Who, for example. The final scene of the third Doctor serial, The Green Death, when the Doctor's assistant, Joe Grant, says that she's going to leave him and stay behind so that she can marry a scientist and go travelling with him. I mean, the Doctor stands in the doorway, watching Joe, seeing how happy she is, and then he silently walks out of the house and gets into his car. Then he looks back at the house fondly and then solemnly drives away into the night. I mean, that got me right there, man. That got me right there. Proof that I do have a heart. Kick that, Tin Man. Actually, there was another movie that got to me. Do you know that scene in Die Hard when Bruce Willis kills the terrorist on the stairwell and then he goes up to the corpse and searches him for useful things and then he finds some shoes because he's not got his but then he finds out that the shoes are way too small? John McLean had to have cold feet for the rest of that film. 
Oh, and don't forget Shirley Duvall in The Shining. I mean, God, how annoying is she on that? I mean, every time I watch this film, and I do watch it a lot, it's one of my favourites, if not the favourite film that I have, you know, I'm screaming encouragement to Nicholson to kill her, and he never does. I mean, God, I feel for you, man. I really do. Oh, and the Twilight franchise, I mean, its existence pretty much just makes me want to weep. And then there was the film Looking Number 11 and the fact that Josh Hartnett's towel never falls off. I mean, does that count? Well, it should, because it fucking upset me. But even in the face of all those emotionally charged examples, I don't cry. And now, if you'll excuse me, talking about all these emotional scenes has got me feeling quite down. So, you know, I've got some comfort eating to do. No! <laughs>